still probably. But, um, <laughs> but I think everybody knows Rich. So um, our next speaker is uh, my colleague, Rebecca Willett um, from, from Duke, and, and she's going to talk about some work on suppressed uh, sensing and optical acoustics. Great. Thanks very much, Larry. Uh, I realize I'm between you guys and lunch, and I'm going to do my best not to keep anybody late. And uh, towards that end, I just want to point out that my collaborators here, Ramel Marsha, Max Briginski, and Jack Harmony, are all in the audience. So um, memorize these faces, and uh, then if you have any involved questions, you can ask them uh, over lunch. So I'm going to talk to you about today about how we can use a lot of the compressed sensing ideas and methods that are being discussed at this workshop in the context of optical systems. And I think that's an interesting context to explore because, first of all, it raises several important challenges that we're going to talk about in some detail here. Uh, and also because if we can figure out how to address these challenges, excuse me, then there's a lot of application domains where we can have a pretty nice positive impact. So as Kevin Kelly mentioned yesterday, the detectors that are used to measure light, especially in low light settings, these photomultiplier cubes are huge. Those pictures aren't exactly to scale, but it, <laughs> it conveys the, the message that if you wanted to have a you know, 50, 100 megapixel camera composed of these kinds of detectors, then, then you'd really be in trouble. And the practical effect of that mean, is that in a lot of settings, say like hyperspectral imaging, using conventional kinds of imager designs, uh, we're really limited in terms of spatial and spectral resolution because we'd need one of these huge photo detectors for every single spatial location and every single spectral band, and very quickly we run out of either space or money. And even if we were in a setting, um, say at NASA, where we could afford the time, I'm sorry, the money and the space for a very large detector array, um, we would still want to get the most bang for our buck. So we'd want to be able to take the signal that we're, we're sensing and get the best safe source localization. So we still have a real strong incentive to try to get the most resolution possible out of our sensors. Okay, so, so compressed sensing seems like a natural fit for addressing some of these kinds of challenges. But there's some special challenges that we particularly have to consider in the setting of um, optical systems. Uh, the first of these is non-negativity, and this comes up all over the place. Uh, when you're measuring the intensity of an optical field, well, that intensity is inherently positive. And that means any intensity estimate we compute should be positive. And it means any intensity that's hitting our detectors must be positive, which again has, uh, which has the additional, uh, I'm sorry, the, the additional impact of saying that the sensing matrices that we construct have to only contain non-negative elements. So we can't compute or use some kind of Bernoulli ensemble or Gaussian ensemble along the lines of what we see in a lot of the compressed sensing literature. Because in hardware, there's no way to really subtract one beam of light from another beam of light. Okay. In addition, um, in contrast to some of the things that, say, Kevin talked about yesterday, um, at Duke we've been thinking a lot about snapshot type systems. So we're worried about the case where there's some dynamics in the scene, where there's movement that we want to be able to capture. And in that setting, if you collect one random projection after another sequentially over time, then you run the risk of really limiting your temporal resolution. So we're interested in exploring systems where we collect all of our projection measurements with just one click of our shutter. All right, so what I'm going to talk about today are ways that we can address these challenges, both from a practical standpoint and from a more theoretical standpoint. So on the practical side of things, um, one way in which we could think about building systems that use compressed sensing methodology is within the context of what's called coded aperture imaging. Uh, so this is not new, and it's been used uh, very widely in fields like astronomy, for instance. And just to give you a little background, I want to tell you about one particularly popular uh, approach based on modified uniformly redundant arrays. So the basic idea is that you would form a mask, like this mirror pattern that I have here, um, which would be composed of multiple tiny little pinholes in a specific pattern. And you take that mask and you put it into your optical system so that effectively what you measure is the convolution of your scene or your signal and that mask pattern. And so um, your coded observation, of course, would look nothing at all like your original scene. But these mask patterns in the mirror context are specifically designed 
so that each pattern has kind of a complementary reconstruction pattern. So if you take the original pattern and the reconstruction pattern and convolve them, you get a Dirac delta function. So what that means is that we can take our coded observation, convolve it with this reconstruction pattern, and get our scene back out. And that's the basic idea of how people have approached coded aperture imaging in the past. And in fact, if you tell yourself, well, I'm going to restrict my attention to cases where I do reconstruction using convolution, then in a sense you can prove that these mirror patterns are optimal. But if you say, well, we've actually got quite a bit of compute power at our disposal, um, and I'm willing to use computation in order to do some nonlinear reconstruction, things along the lines of what has been discussed here at this workshop, then it's not clear at all that the mirror patterns are optimal. Another drawback of the mirror kind of setup is that the resolution that we can get out of a system like this is inherently limited by the size of the detector. If we've got a detector with n different de um, photomultiplier tubes in it, then we get an image with n different pixels in it, and that's that's the end of the story. So what we've been considering here at Duke is how can we use compressed sensing ideas in order to rethink this paradigm. So in particular, we said, all right, I want to have a signal and a coded aperture. And I don't know what the right coded aperture to use is, but I'm going to assume that I measure a downsampled, low-resolution version of this convolution between my scene and my um, coded aperture. And then I want to apply compressed sensing-like reconstruction algorithms in order to tease out my scene from these coded observations. So mathematically, we can formulate this as saying that my signal F is convolved with this mask pattern T, and then we downsample that, sen um, that, that convolution um, implicitly by having a limited detector array size, and there's some noise in our measurement. And so the question is, what is the right T, or what T is going to ensure that we've got the kinds of restricted isometry properties or other useful properties that's going to make it possible for us to do this reconstruction effectively? Okay, so uh, convolution is a linear operation, so we can take this F convolved with T and represent it as some linear operator A, which depends on T uh, times F. And so the question is, how do we design A so that it corresponds to a realistic coded aperture and corresponds to a practical compressed sensing problem that we can solve. Uh, so what we observed is that this sensing matrix AP, uh, along the lines of what Justin was talking about earlier, uh, has some very special structure in it, similar to the Toplet structure. Um, with these two-dimensional signals, we actually have a block circulant matrix with circulant blocks. And so what we demonstrated is that we can actually generate a pseudo-random matrix A with this structure and with these inherent symmetries so that it corresponds to a real mask pattern so that all these positivity constraints and everything are satisfied. So we can actually think about it corresponding to something real. And so that the resulting sensing matrix D times this um, A uh, satisfies a slightly weakened version of the restricted isometry property. And we tested this out in some simulations where we had an original image, an aerial view of, of part of Duke. And um, on the top path here, we collected some uncoded observations and then tried to do a reconstruction. You can see that there's a lot of resolution that's lost here. Uh, and this is actually equivalent to the best kind of resolution you could get if you used mirror-like coded apertures. Um, but by using the coded apertures that we developed within this compressed sensing context and using the nice nonlinear reconstruction, we're able to get significantly more uh, detail. And I know it's a little bit hard to see maybe from the audience, but for instance, we've in the lower circle there, there's a bunch of cars with lines indicating the parking spaces, and you can see that in the compressed sensing reconstruction and certainly cannot see it with the uncoded reconstruction. Okay, so this is a nice practical example about how we could actually put these ideas into practice. Um, I mentioned earlier we're also considering optical systems from a slightly more theoretical perspective. Um, so in particular, how can we bound the performance of compressed sensing subject to all these constraints and challenges that I mentioned earlier and subject to the special kinds of statistics of the noise that are present in um, optical systems, particularly in low light settings. 